So this brings us to the end of the electromagnetism topic for Physics 1B. But before you go, let's have a look at what you'll learn about if you go on and do further courses on electromagnetism. So we've seen that there's really deep links between electricity and magnetism. One of the ways that these forces are unified is through relativity. So we saw this when we saw that moving a loop towards a magnet creates a magnetic force on the electrons inside our conducting loop, at causing them to move and inducing a current. And the force in this case was described by the equation F is equal to QV cross B. We saw that if the magnet moves towards the coil with the same relative speed, once again we get the same induced current. However, in this case, the force which is acting upon the electrons in our loop, causing them to move, is the electric force, which is described by the equation F is equal to EQ, where E in this case is the electric field which is induced by the changing magnetic flux. So whether the force is interpreted as a magnetic force or an electric force depends upon the frame of reference of the observer. So for example, if we imagine that we are an observer on the magnet traveling with the magnet, then as we move towards the coil, it appears that the coil is moving and so it's going to be the magnetic force which is starting the induced current inside the coil. However, if we're an observer in the reference frame of the loop, so we're now moving with the loop, as we move towards the magnet, it looks like it's the magnetic flux which is changing, which is inducing the electric field. So these forces can actually be combined into a Lorentz force, which is described with the equation F is equal to Q brackets E plus V cross B. Now this equation can work in any reference frame, so if we're moving with the loop, if we're moving with the magnet, or of course we could have both of these moving from a, another reference frame. So as you go on in physics, you'll learn about relativity and how we can use relativity within electromagnetism. So as you go on in electromagnetism, you'll continue to learn about Maxwell's equations. So in a differential form, these can be written as del dot E, which we can say as the divergence of E is equal to rho divided by epsilon naught. Del dot B is equal to zero. Del cross E, which we can say as the curl of E, is equal to minus the partial derivative of B with respect to T and del cross B is equal to mu naught J plus one over C squared times the partial derivative of E with respect to T. So in these equations, del is a vector operator. So it can be written as d dx, d dy, d dz. Now we haven't been using the differential form in this course because vector calculus was not a prerequisite for this course. However, we have learned a lot about Maxwell's equations in the integral form. So let's have a look at each of these equations and just describe what we know about them already. So this first equation, the divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon naught. Rho in this case is the charge density. So the charge density is the amount of charge per unit volume. This is actually just Gauss's law. So we've seen it in the integral form as the integral over a closed surface of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And Q enclosed is related to the charge density rho through Q enclosed is equal to the integral over the volume we're considering rho dV, where dV is a volume element. Maxwell's second equation, del dot B is equal to zero, is another way of writing Gauss's law for magnetism. So this equation tells us that there's no flux through a closed surface. And we saw that in the integral form, we can write this as the integral over a closed surface of B dot dA is equal to zero. Maxwell's third equation, del cross E, which is the curl of E, is equal to minus the partial derivative of B with respect to T is another way of writing Faraday's law 
for induced electric fields. So we saw that we could write that the integral around a closed loop of E dot DL is equal to minus d phi B dt. This is just another way of writing Maxwell's third equation. So we haven't quite considered Maxwell's fourth equation in its entirety. So Maxwell's fourth equation is curl of B is equal to mu naught J, where J is the current density plus one over C squared times the partial derivative of E with respect to T. However, we have considered the case where the electric field is not varying with time. So if the electric field is not varying with time, then the partial derivative of E with respect to time is zero. And we can write Maxwell's fourth equation as the curl of B is equal to mu naught times J. Now it turns out that this is just another way of writing Ampere's law. So Ampere's law in the integral form we've seen can be written as the integral around a closed loop of B dot DL is equal to mu naught times I enclosed. So as you'll see, Maxwell's equations will form a basis for a lot of what you're going to be going on and learning about in the optics topic. So this is because light is made up of electromagnetic radiation, which essentially consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields.